just to the left of the Cavs bench. All we need Leba. is a deflection. Pass deflected by Mobley, but grabbed by Doncic. Doncic bounced underneath the P.J., and he laid it in with 2.6 to go. Cavs out of timeout. Struess into Mobley. Back to Max. Half-court shot. Good! Good! He hit it! Cavs win! This place is going crazy! And welcome to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. You just heard it. That was the voice of the Cavaliers, Tim Alcorn, on the buzzer beater from Max Struess, a.k.a. Supermax. And welcome on to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. How are y'all doing? How y'all doing? Man, I, when you watch that clip, man, you still feel the energy, man. That was... That was a big shot, man, and that was big for him. Oh, sorry for everybody that's looking at me. I, you know, type of belly. We got uh, my Tupac stuff. Shout out to uh, <laughs> Steve. They got us one of those nice holograms of Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> you got the hologram posted up. How you doing, hologram? Hologram on, pop? Man. You know, listen, man. I just had to come back and bless the world one time. I know y'all still bumping my music. You know, <laughs> West Side till we die. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Oh my goodness, Earl the Pearl in the building. What's, What's going up, on? What's up with your mans? Man, I don't know, man. West Side Connection. Man. <laughs> you know, hit him up 2.0, drop of the day. You know, this is why we can't have nothing good. <laughs> this is why you put three dudes. They come in with their own stuff and bandanas and good gracious, y'all just here throwing gang signals. What's up? It's not gang. It was the West Side. Okay, man. We good. Listen, man. You Ty know what Pop. it is, man. We already <laughs> now, Earl. Let, let, listen. What did you What did you think when uh, when he hit that shot? Oh man, super super max man. That that's that's the first thing I thought about was actually after the post game. You know when he said Don wasn't in, so somebody had to do it, and that's what we talk a lot about as players asserting themselves and the moment not being too big and actually wanting to be that dude in that moment, and like the confidence that he has in himself, the confidence that he has in his own skill set, like man, it's greatly appreciated. It never looked. I do. I had a feeling that shot had a had a possibility of going in when he let it go, because in that last four minutes of the quarter, dude was cooking. Like anything that was leaving his hand that was going up, it was going in. And it's funny because on this show, man, we've talked before about Struess wanting to be the dude mm -hmm. in big moments, even when Donovan Mitchell was on the court. And like we we need more of that. We wish it was more of our co core four guys asserting themselves like that, man. But Shout out to Max Struess, man. That's the real Super Max right there. Hey, we're we going to get back into that. We'll have the voice of the, uh, of the Cavs on the radio, Tim Alcorn on. But first, McNuggets, what you got? Well, so we also got DeAnthony Bell coming yes, in sir. studio today, which is going to be awesome. He'll be joining us right around 12. I think it'll be the first time a current Brown has joined us in studio. So make sure y'all stay strapped for that. But we're going to spend plenty of time on the Cavs, as you just mentioned. G, but first, a quick word from Fandu. You can get buckets like Max Struess. On FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your team wins. You can bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and so much more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS to shoot your shot. FanDuel, an official sports book partner of the NBA. And we do have a winning ticket today. From So Live, who won four hundred and twenty-one dollars and seventy-six cents on a five-dollar bet for Monday's chaotic Knicks <coughs> Pistons ending. It was an eight-part same-game parlay. All eight legs hit, hmm. and So Live turned five bucks into four hundred twenty-one dollars and seventy-six cents. If you have a winning ticket, make sure you send it to us. We'll feature it on the show in the coming days. We send it to So Live for winning their bet last night. Unfortunately, Earl and Tyvis did not win their bets yesterday on the Cavs, but I think y'all will trade a losing bet for a win game or a winning game on a shot like that from Max Struess last night. I don't know. I didn't like you. You didn't have to say that. If it's a 25 <laughs> game, if it's a 25 I mean, I, leg parlay, I'm I'll taking take a it. I had an eight leg parlay and I'll take it. We won. And like, I had to laugh about it because I do better. Who screwed you? Hmm. 
You know who. You know who screwed me. Kyrie? No. no. Came through. Dude. There is Garland. Had about 15 points. Hey, what did he get? Under nine? Hey, under under yeah, 10? Hey. 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 Hey, hey, but but I, I can only be mad at myself because I knew better for even having Darius Garland on my ticket. There, I be, and this is the re, half the reason why we be so going in on Darius Garland. It's not because he he be playing bad. It's because you be messing our 25-leg parlays up, dog. You be having Minimoski assist. And like some days you be like, I'm going to put him down for six. He get three and a half assists. That don't work. He could be having him down for 10. If you had him down for the Minimoski for the lower. <laughs> <laughs> and he gave you eight, you you really want to pour your Kool Aid out. You really be upset. Dang. I, yeah, my yeah. It, it, you know what? It's that's just how it is when you come to basketball. I missed Miles by two legs. I needed another three from Garland, and I needed two more rebounds from Allen. Which how can you not get eleven <laughs> boards? But him and him and Mobley did a really good job on the boards. I think they both split nine rebounds apiece. So. You know, it is what it is. I take the Cavs win over all of that. Facts. It wasn't, wasn't just the buzzer beater from Struess. In the fourth quarter, he went five for five from deep. The Cavs were down 10. Struess went back to back from deep. The Mavs answered. They come back down. Struess, two more threes before the game winner, guys. 15 points in the final five minutes of that fourth quarter and the win for the Cavs. Going back through all your memories of watching the Cleveland Cavaliers play basketball, where do you think Max Struess's 15-point outburst in the final few minutes of the game, including the game winner from 60 feet, what does that rank among some of the craziest all-time individual accomplishments in a single quarter you've ever seen from a Cav? Off the top of the head, I'd say probably top five. Um, I, you know, you think about LeBron against, who was it, Detroit, where he scored like 20 some points? Yeah, yeah. In 27 four, in a row. Yeah, something like that. You think about Donovan Mitchell's uh, 71 point game. He went crazy in the fourth quarter. You think about Kyrie versus San the Trailblazers and San Antonio. He went crazy in the fourth quarter. I think LeBron fouled out that game in San yeah. Antonio. He had to carry that team and help them win that. So. Right after that, I, I probably put that Max Struess Ke up there. Kevin Love a couple years ago had 30 in the quarter. He had 30? Yeah. In the fourth? No, it was in the first quarter. It was the first quarter. Oh, it was in the first quarter. He went cra 30. Like, he went there for 30. It was crazy. Kevin Love had 30 in the first quarter? Yeah. yeah. Was ruined, they was playing with LeBron. He finished for, like, 34 yeah. points in yeah. that entire yeah, game, right. though. I, you know, I, I look at it. I put the whole, the whole, the whole game for him, like, at seven. I said a really quick seventh. Right. Uh, as I went through the, uh, you know, some of the games that I was going through in my mind, I think this this game was m more important and it, and it hit different is because this game, as I was tweeting, this game had playoff atmosphere. Yes. This had playoff style. The rest was even letting them play in that in that fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. Kyrie came down. Um, he wanted a foul. Didn't get it. Uh, Darius Garland came down on a layup on an ISO uh, and he didn't get it. So they was letting the guys play a little bit. Um, but, Matt, you know, that game to me was almost over. They down 10, and Max Struess runs off four straight threes, like pull it up with, with no hesitation. And I remember the, I was talking to McNuggets the first game of the year when he was playing against the uh, Nets. I think when they first got him, Max Struess was like, yeah, like, he was trying, He was looking around like he was going to take the last shot. <laughs> and I'm like, you, I'm confused, Max Struess. This is not what you, you, you can't come out. I know you don't know the ropes yet. But, like, that mentality, they going to need this from him. This is the mentality that they got to have as the others, right? Shaq and, and Kenny and, and Jet, they, all, they always talk about, you know, TNT, the others. Like, when you get to the playoffs, it's about the others. Like, especially at home. Mm -hmm. You're going to need these type performances at home from him, from Karis <laughs> LeVert. Uh, you know what I'm saying? For Isaac Okoro. And then on the road, or, or excuse me, on the, on the road, you're going to have to have your guys like Darius Garland. Yeah. I'm going to say his name in all caps. Yes. And Donovan Mitchell carry you. So, do, do you feel like, do, do you guys feel like Strew should be more aggressive looking for a shot? Um, given the fact that, you know, he's he's a big part of who they are. I mean, after hitting this big-time shot, it, it just shows that he has that potential to get things done like that. I mean, that's a difficult shot. That's really one of those ones you just throw it up and hope that it goes in. But to me, he kind of knew when he left his hands that that ball was going to go in. You know, Donovan Mitchell isn't on the court. You know, you need somebody to step up and be aggressive. And the good thing that what was good about that is that Evan Mobley, whether he meant to do it or not, they recognize who was the hot hand. Find the hot hand. Right, right. This man been cooking all quarter. Yes, right. he's going to take the last shot. Yeah. I don't care who's on the court. He right. should be the one that takes the shot because he's hot. 
If you anybody that's ever played basketball, you know, like you see that dude cooking. Let him cook. Get you out the way. Turn around and throw it right back yeah, to him. Gave like, it right back to him. Boom. You could have found Darius. You could have found another a lot of other guys, but you knew Max Struess was had the high hand. So give him a shot. And he ended up coming through for you. I think that after watching this game, I know it's a regular season, and a lot of people say that the regular season don't matter, but you can tell that this game mattered to both teams. Both teams really wanted to win this game. Both teams' superstars, outside of Darius, both teams, the stars showed up and they showed out in right. big ways. They played big in big moments. Luka finished, what, 45 points? Kyrie had 30. So, like, they was actually hooping. But what it tells me is that the Cavs did a good job in the offseason of getting the talent that they need. You know, George Niang, he he played, he showed up and made some some tough buckets. <laughs> yep. uh, Max Struess obviously made some tough buckets. They had 30 points come off the bench. I think everybody in the starting lineup may have been in double figures except Darius. Mm -hmm. So they're all – it's coming together. They have the right recipe to win some of these big-time games. They just got to continue to jail. And Darius, you got to get going on the points, man. It's going to come a game – where you got to hit. It was nice to see Okoro hit a couple of shots. He played some good defense. I didn't like the Jared Allen switching on Luka because Luka kind of took advantage of that every yeah. time. But outside of that, it was a good game. I mean, I, I look at this game. The game to me was closer than what it should have been. I understand the Cavs found themselves down 10. Mm -hmm. But like unforced errors, careless turnovers was the reason why Dallas was even hanging around to begin with. And then you can kind of tell that this was going to end up being the type of game that it was. I guess the point I'm making is if the Cavs would have never played so sloppy at certain points of the game, I don't think this game would have been as close. Or you can, you can switch it to if Darius Garland would have showed up like the rest of the stars showed up in this game, this game wouldn't have been as close. You know what I mean? I think they did a great job of feeding a hot hand in the fourth quarter. Um, to me, Max Struess has already identified that he's clutch. He's, he's already proven to us that he has that mindset. We've talked on more than one occasion about Max Struess being the dude that's verbally said, I want the ball in my hand in the closing moments. And outside of Donovan Mitchell, I can't think of another player on this team who outright always goes out there and say, hey, put the ball in my hand. We talk about the core four on this team. Which run of the other those, those three dudes have you ever talk, talked about, like, put the ball in my hand at winning time? Yeah, we seen Darius Garland wave off Donovan Mitchell one time, and I got to give him his credit where his credit is due, but I need that dude to be way more consistent, right? You know what I mean? And if he's not going to be – if he's not going to show up, that's when you definitely need the others to show up. You had Karis LeVert had six dimes off the bench, right? You, you got Max Strew scored 15 points in the last three minutes and 42 seconds of the damn game. You see what I'm saying? So, like, the fact that you had the other dudes show up, it was huge. But all I'm saying is I don't think this game should have been this close to begin with. The Cavs had 16 turnovers to Dallas's five, right? You know what I mean? And then just like the unforced errors, I thought J.B. Bickerstaff could have did much better in, in the last minute and a half of that game. He had an out-of-bounds play that I think resulted in a turnover. I was, was going to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, that, that was a head-scratcher to me. <clears throat> You know what I mean? And so, like, it, it really do, like, Struess and Spider kind of bailed out with what I thought was a sloppy game, if I'm being totally honest with you. Yeah, they should have. To me, I, to me, I think they should have lost. Uh, I thought I was tweeting at the time, and I, I could not believe. First of all, Donovan Mitchell turned the ball over. <coughs> um, just a careless turnover in the backcourt, and they went down to score. Um, he ended up getting that back because he banked in a three. Mm -hmm. He ended up coming down and getting that back, banked in a three. But the thing that that really hit me was on the out of bounds play. On that out of bounds I'm glad play, glad you bringing this up, G. You you gotta you gotta call something up better than that. And my problem is, and, and shout out to an assistant. I don't know his name, the assistant head coach. He comes over, he grabs up JB because JB walking towards the ref in crunch time. When Darius Garland got fouled at the top of the key. Oh, yeah. And he was going crazy. About to get and he grabbed him back, pushed him back, and then JB kind of was going. He was like, man, get your hands off me. Don't you, know, you be you telling me. Greg, what... Greg Buckner is the assistant. Yeah. And I'm like, good job. I man, you got to be even killed. And then, uh, and then you come out the next couple of plays. I don't know if it was the next play or the play or whatever the case may be. But you have an out-of-bounds play yes. that was drawn up. 
that looked like it was drawn up like somebody playing Ring Around the Rosie or, or Freeze Tag in the Backyard. You had three dudes running to the basketball. McNuggets, it was one of the worst joints I've ever seen. I don't even have... It, it should have cost them the game. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd have to see the the replay of it again. My issue is, why is Mobley your trigger guy? You got a bunch of really good passes on this team. Evan Mobley is capable of doing it for sure. But I'm not sure in a one-point game no. if that's the guy I want making a make-or-break play with no more timeouts, by the way. And I know there were some people asking, why isn't Donovan on the court? Well, they took him out for that defensive possession, and then obviously it worked out in their favor, but he was not on the court because JB opted to go with a more defensive lineup. He had both Biggs in, Okoro, Struess, and uh, who was the last person in on that play? Levert. 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 Yeah, yeah. So they went, they went with more size. Uh, that's why he wasn't in, but I, it worked out, so whatever. But I didn't love the idea that Mobley was the trigger guy, but I'm not going to let – that decision override what we witnessed last night, which was an all-time great performance in a three-minute stretch by Max. Because Schreiber. yeah, and, and I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to nitpick the win. Um, I'll take that dub any any time I can get it. And, and the, one of the things that we looked at was, you know, in playoff basketball, I like to look at this right. If, if say for instance we playing those those Mavericks in a seven-game series, right? Mm -hmm. Games like that shift whole series. Right. Ooh. If this was if this was one of the Cavs' first two games, it just shows you how delicate it is. If you if the Cavs just say this is game two of the series, Cavs won the first game. Second game they play like that. Mm -hmm. If they lose that game, you in trouble because yeah. you got to go, go back to, to Dallas it. now. And they yeah. and the way that Luca and what's the name is playing, they're gonna give you buckets when they get home. Oh, they split in thirty. So they so see so this this was a great test for the Cavs because I think. It, it, it battle tests them, and you can see what it looks like when you got two of the top ten offensive players in the world on one team I, going back and back. I mean, you. adversity builds character, right? And when you when you look at this game and you look at all the different reasons of why the Cavaliers could have lost this game, and yet they still won this game, that's a testament to this team not being the same Cleveland Cavaliers from last season. That's a team that that's a little bit more mature and can kind of like grit and grind it through those tough adverse moments. Mm -hmm. Like we can sit up here and we can nitpick all we want to. In any NBA game, nothing is perfect, right? Mm -hmm. There's going to always be certain things that happen or don't happen that results in the outcome of, of the game. And so, yeah, I don't want to overshadow what Max Struess did because it was amazing, but I'm not going to sit up here and act like it was the most wild thing I had ever seen, right? I didn't seen LeBron do some crazy ass things. You know, you go back to the Detroit game, or the game winner he hit in the playoffs, game two against Orlando, Ooh. right? There's so many different moments that you can point to. I guess I'm just satisfied and thankful that he hit that shot because if he didn't, we would be sitting up here talking about yeah. why in the hell Donovan Mitchell wasn't on the court in the closing seconds yep. of the game, or why in the hell did you draw up an uh, inbounds pass that, that had Evan Mobley as your trigger guy, or how this team that was going up against a Dallas backcourt that's on the defensive side is very porous, and how yet you still ended up with 16 unforced turnovers, right? And so, like, those are the things that are real issues, but yet somehow, some way, the Cavaliers won this game. And things like that are encouraging. Things like that are confidence builders, right? Those are the things that you can build off of, work on, and continue to get better. Another thing, real quick, because I know we got to go, the Cavs got up 43s. They shot 20 for 40, 50% from, uh, from the field. Donovan Mitchell talked about that 40 attempt mark being the target, the Cavs is three and two uh, in their last five games. The two losses, they didn't get 40 attempts up from three-point range. McNuggets, uh, we got our guests. Before we get to them, we got to, uh, got to read. We do. Real quick, we're going to bring Tim Alcorn in in one sec, who had a phenomenal call of Max Struess's shot last night. But first, a quick word from FanDuel. You can get buckets on your first bet with FanDuel America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your bet wins. You can bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and so much more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS to shoot your shot. FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NBA, an official partner of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show as well. And we started the show today with Tim Alcorn's call of Max Struess's 60-foot game winner. And now we are lucky enough to be joined by the Cavs play-by-play -play guy himself, Tim Alcorn, from Chicago, where the Cavs are getting ready to take on the Bulls tonight. But Tim, I'll start with this. In all the history of calls you've made, where did last night's rank among some of the craziest things you've seen in person? 
Yeah, that, I mean, that was just absolute <laughs> insanity to uh, see Max Struess just uncork that thing from just beyond half court uh, was phenomenal. And then, of course, uh, that incredible reaction from the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse crowd. Uh, it ranks up there. There's no doubt about it. Uh, it was certainly one of the most exciting calls that I've ever had. You know, Tim, I was just going to get to that as well. You, you talk about um, having a, a great call like that. As an announcer, as a broadcaster, as a play-by-play man, um, when things like that happen, it, when, you, when you're making your call, are you going off just raw emotion? Are you, do you have some stuff that you kind of rehearse? Like, yeah, I'm going to say this just so I know what to go to. Or do you just kind of just go with the flow? Like, what goes into making a real classic call like that when you have a buzzer beater and, and everything is going crazy? Well, first of all, uh, I don't know if it was great, and I don't know if it was classic. Uh, but, no, I don't rehearse anything. I really don't. Uh, you just have to let the words flow uh, as they come into your brain. And anybody that's listened to me knows uh, sometimes those words don't come out the best <laughs> way. But, uh, no, I, I don't rehearse. And, you know, one of the things that my mentor and my guiding star in the, in the broadcast business, Joe Tate, told me was uh, don't lose – don't lose sight of what's happening. Uh, you can get caught up in the emotion of it, but keep in mind that, especially on the radio side, uh, there are people that can't see uh, what you're describing. Maybe they're in their car, or maybe they're at work, uh, whatever the case may be. And so uh, you just try to describe it as cleanly as you can and capture the emotion of it. And so uh, you want to make sure the call is accurate uh, and then you want to just convey what is happening at that very moment. And so uh, that's really the building block. And hopefully I was able to do that last night. Oh, you were. Oh, you were. Classic. <laughs> yeah, we definitely that was. Class. We're stamping that. Definitely. Hey, Tim, you know, that fourth quarter, you know, we were before you came on, we were talking about last night looked like a playoff game. It seemed like it had a playoff atmosphere to it. You watch the game and you look at the fourth quarter and both teams uh, offensively, they were cooking. They were both smoking hot. Um, as the anticipation built towards the end of that game, from where you were sitting at, when Struth took that shot, from your vantage point, did it look like it was good? Like, did you, did you have to question uh, this may or may not go? Because I was listening to some of the post game, and Donovan Mitchell said, he said, I ain't going to say I'll call Bucket. He said, but he knew he had a chance when they left his hand. Oh, uh, you could see it was online. And again, from that length, I mean, an inch or two either way. Uh, and that shot could be off. But once it left Max's hand, you could see it was online. And then it was just a matter of, is that ball going to go in? And so you're following the path. And to say that it almost sounded like a bomb went off in Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse would be an understatement. The The roar of that crowd was absolutely deafening. Um, and that's another thing, you know, as far as the radio side is concerned. And uh, I think my counterpart with the Guardians, Hammy, Tom Hamilton, is the absolute best at this in letting the crowd tell the story. Uh, Max hit the shot, and I tried just to keep quiet for a few seconds just so that the listeners could hear that crowd and the roar that went up from the crowd. Uh, Hammy is so great at that, brilliant uh, on home run calls where he just lets that crowd at Progressive Field tell the story. So. Uh, yeah, you had a sense it was online. You had a sense it, it had a shot, pardon the pun. And then once it went through, it was just electrifying. Tim, you know, I, not living in the moment, trying not to live in this moment of Max Struess. You know, you know, the Cavs got the core four. And, you know, when it comes down to the end of game situation, do you think that one of the core four, if Donovan Mitchell's not available, if he's double teamed or triple team, let's just say he's not on the court for the last shot, are you now comfortable with Max Struess taking, or do you think some guys like Darius or Evan should be able to take that shot? You know, that's a that's a great question. And once Thank the you. game was over and, and Jim Jones and I were able to get our pulse rates back down, uh, we talked about the fact that there's a reason the Cavs went out and got Max Struess this summer. He's a winner. Uh, he started every playoff game for the Miami Heat the last two years. He knows what it takes to winning that what it takes to win that heat culture uh, that he comes from. And uh, listen, Max Struess is a gamer, but I don't know. You know, if you want Evan or Jared taking a half court shot to try to win, it, but, uh, you know, those guys are those guys are winners too. So if you have an opportunity, because I'm sure if the Cavs had a timeout. 
they would have taken the timeout and advanced the ball. Um, so there, you know, do you get Evan with a look or Jared with a look in the block? Because 2.6 seconds, you would have had that opportunity. But, uh, no, these guys are winners, and they step up to the moment. And I can tell you, uh, you know, I'm at every practice for the Cavaliers and shoot around. Uh, they practice that play. I've seen that play in practice where the inbounds guy throws it in, comes racing up, gets it back, and lets it fly. Uh, I'm not going to say they hit it every time in practice, but Max hit it when it counted. Tim, you know, I'm glad you said that. You got a firsthand view of this team uh, every day, all day, in practice when you're covering the games. Uh, Darius Garland has played 13 games since he's been back from injury. He's averaging 13 points, six assists, one rebound, shooting 44.7% from the field. Do we have, is there cause for pause? Is there reason to be, is there legit concern there, or, or do you believe that Darius Garland is going to be okay? Oh, I don't think there's any reason for concern. Uh, DG's an elite player. He's an all-star level player. So uh, the first few games he came back, uh, number one, I think he just had to get his strength back. Here's a guy that hadn't eaten solid foods for six weeks. I mean, his jaw was wired shut. So uh, just conditioning-wise and getting his strength back, he had to put some weight back on. Uh, so I think that played a factor. And then trying to blend into to what the Cavs are doing now. Uh, I heard you guys talking before I joined about uh, 43 balls per game. Uh, so that's kind of a, a new wrinkle that Jared, or excuse me, that DG has to get used to. So, uh, no, I don't think there's any reason for concern whatsoever. Uh, Darius Garland is an outstanding guard. And uh, I think as this comes into the stretch run, 25 games remaining, he's going to be just fine. Uh, you know, like you said, this is a perfect segue. One more question before we uh, let you get out of here, Tim. Um, when you look at the Cavaliers and being in the second slot in the East, to a lot of people, that 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 if you would have told us that before the season, um, you know, we would have been head over heels. Do you think there's some, you know, there's there's some level of resistance? Uh, there's some people or fans that aren't, you know, all the way in on the bandwagon just because of the way that series ended with the Knicks because. You know, right now, the Cavs are playing basketball. Their record is better than pretty much everybody in the league, including some of the really great teams we thought were going to win championships. Do you feel like they're, they're, that people still have this thing in their mouth, nasty taste in their mouth, where they don't actually see this year how well the Cavs are playing compared to last year? I think nationally, that's absolutely the case. Again, nationally. Uh, when people look at where the Cavs finished up as far as the playoffs were concerned, they're going, yeah, that's the team that got bounced by the Knicks in five games. Uh, if, if you're not following this team locally uh, in the Cleveland market, uh, then I think you're making a serious mistake because uh, this team is for real. This is a better basketball team uh, than lost in the first round to the Knicks. They're deeper, as I mentioned, the addition of Struess and George Niang and just the further development of Darius Garland along with Evan Mobley. I think Jared Allen was really stung by that loss to the Knicks last year. He's taken that to heart. So uh, if you haven't bought in yet, uh, you better, uh, because this is a team that can make a deep run. I say make a deep run. Uh, I'm not guaranteeing that. Uh, you got to play the games. But uh, it's a Cavalier team that's deep. It's talented. And uh, I think it wants to advance further. In fact, that's the goal than they did last year. Tim, thanks for, for taking some time out of your day to you know, come chop it up with us. We'll talk to you very soon. Oh, always enjoy chatting with you guys. Thanks for having me on. All right. That's the great awesome. Tim Alcorn, voice, play-by-play uh, -play voice man of the, of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Great call from him on the Cavs game. He got that He got that gritty voice. Like, he got a little Joe Tate in him. And that's hard, that's hard to say. Pause. Yes, go ahead. Now, now, always great talking to Tim. Yes. The Cavs had their post-game locker room access, and they were on the plane about 30 minutes later, so I know they uh, are still waking up this morning, but it looked like Tim may have been enjoying the so festivities tight, with the rest of the team afterwards. And we always appreciate Tim That's for coming on. He was in studio with us last time, but always good to get him on after an impressive call like that. All right, you got one more thought before we move on to Denzel Ward? No, I, I, I mean, great interview with Tim. Uh, you know, I guess I got to lean on the information that's presented to me. Tim says <laughs> Darius is going to be all right. He said Darius is going to be all right. So, I mean, he's around him more than I am. I'm somebody with an opinion that don't have many facts outside of the games they play. This, he watches him practice. He travels with him. He, he watches him play. So, 
If he says yes, the man is elite, he must be a diamond player. I don't know. So. We thought G-Baby was going to live. <laughs> yeah, so y'all need to cut that out. Let's see. Y'all, the man, he going to get back to where he was. I think that when it come playoff time, he that'll be a lot of games played. He got to get – Caught up with the system. I, I he not he not used to shooting all them threes and not. Can I ask a question? Like, okay, I know we got to move on, and I was trying to avoid from going here, but it's like, man, people kind of get on our case for being an apologist for Deshaun Watson and making excuses for Deshaun Watson, and people who really, really love Darius Garland are afraid to be like constructively critical of him when it's warranted. Like this dude is a max player, and I get it. He missed 19 games due to injury, but he's played 13 games since he's been back. Like, I think people are, are kind of like, I guess I'm saying it's the, uh, it's the expectation unrealistic. It's, well, it's the thing, though. See, it, you can't, in those 13 games, he's had games where he's looked good. He has, but, but, uh, but I've, I've, had, so, I've kept so it's, saying, it's not it's not that it's, he can't do it. It's, it's, the, consistency. it's the consistency. Exactly. I, I keep saying that. Like, you don't consistently assert yourself. You don't consistently show up in big moments. We sat here, and we might maybe make 50 million graphics. He may make 50 million montages <laughs> to review this big, you it's know, showdown with four, <laughs> with four superstars. That's what this is really about. Like, he, like with four superstars, right? We was previewing this huge showdown between four <laughs> superstars, and only three of them showed up. And in my mind, I really had this mindset going into this game. Donovan Mitchell just took the podium. He didn't defend you. I know you got to be at least, like, Rolling off that gas alone. What if he do you it? got Kyrie coming into the building? You hear all the noise. What if he do man, it tonight? Man, I'm about to. If he do it tonight, he do it tonight. But Kyrie <laughs> and Luca was here last <laughs> night. Like, they was here last like, night. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you, you didn't show up. We you, ain't going to wait a minute. You didn't show okay, up. You oh, didn't show up. Look, here's why. Because last night on the Ultimate Cap Show, Jason and I discussed what's fair criticism of Darius Garland and what's not fair. What the truth of the situation, and this is before last, name's, uh, last night's game, and what was kind of premature overreaction. So if you want to see, in my opinion, what Jason's opinion, what was fair and unfair criticism of Darius Garland, you can go find that out on the Ultimate Cab Show. On That's a nice page. tease. I like that. And also, tomorrow, <laughs>